Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I remain your G. Arenga. Oh yes. Today, <laughs> oh yeah, we are moving to the King's Palace. That's the Imeri King's Palace in Ondo State. Okay, um, <clears throat> you are welcome back again to Imeri Kingdom. And uh, like I said, we will be coming to meet the KVAC. And the KVAC himself is here. So we want to use this medium to welcome the Onimeri of Imeri Kingdom to Arenga TV. Welcome, sir. You are blessed. So, sir, um, we would like to know more about uh, the uh, kingship of Imeri and the Imeri Kingdom, sir. My name is His Royal Majesty Alayelua Oba. Senior Apostle Baba Tunde Agbadero Adenina the First JP Onimeri of Imeri Kingdom in Osei Local Government of Ondo State. Uh, Imeri Kingdom is a long existing community. We migrated from Ife. Uh, centuries ago and uh, our migration is uh, just because when we were in Ife in those days like they told us our family struggled for the kingship of Ife but uh, they lost it there and then we had to leave. We came to this area with our own crown from the root. That is Ileife. Only Mary of Imeri Kingdom is a beaded, crown beaded oba of the first class. Uh, when we were coming, we first of all made a brief stop at Erima. They had Masala City, that is mosque, close to Elisha. And when this old man saw that uh, he was very close to his uh, kinsman, that's the Owa Bukun, he said, well, this place will not occupy both of us. He had to go further, eastwards, to settle down and get found his old kingdom. Along the line, when we got to his like you were told, we made a brief stop as well. Before we finally come to Okeomolu. Where is Okeomolu? That is where you have the Imeri Comprehensive uh, College today. Okay. But they discovered that uh, it was a battlefield kind of Itegun. So they had to leave there and go to Okemeri. When they got to Okemeri, it's an uphill. And you know during those days, there were Tatrava wars. So that any war coming from either side, they will be able to see, perceive, and uh, know what to do and how to go about it. They had to settle there. But then, what made us to come down again? Scarcity of water. If it were in these days, or like then, we wouldn't come down because of uh, the technology of today. They can sink boreholes. Uh, they, they can't dig well there because it's far, far, far away before they get well. That was why we had to come down again to settle where we are today. Uh, the stool of Onimeri is directly from father to the first son by primogeniture. And uh, here in Imeri, we are agricultural, agriculturalists. We are mainly farmers. The economy here 
Uh, that's why the fact that we have minerals on tap, there are many. Here, you get kaolin. You have uh, petrol somewhere, kerosene, even crude oil, which is black oil, as we will say. Maybe uh, perhaps bitumen as well in this community. But since it is not tapped, there is nothing one can do. We're looking for investors who will come. But uh, you can see very well that, uh, for instance, you came maybe the, yesterday or the day before yesterday. Uh, our light electricity here is epileptic. And in a place where we don't have electricity, it is difficult to put up uh, a factory or an industry because it, the electricity is the soul of any industry anywhere. Unlike the Western world, you go there 24 hours, light doesn't blink. So that is the position. How we got here is what I've said just now. And when we got here, we met people here really, yes. We met the Udusi people here. But because we assisted them to fight wars and won, because always they were always um, being carried away, enslaved. But when we came, we settled with them. And uh, having won the war, we decided again to move further. But this is what I us, well, look, people, you can't go away. You came to deliver us through the help of God. Uh, it is better you settle down with <coughs> us. Said, so, okay. If we're going to settle with you, what are you going to compensate us with? He said, okay, if that is the case, we will concede the kinship to you. That was how we came to be the ruler of this community. And it is indisputable. There and then, you know, uh, people of old, they went into oath, and unlike today, uh, there is no faith again today. We don't believe each other. You are sitting there now. I'm sitting here. You don't know what is in my mind. Neither do I know what is in yours. How about when we make a sale, we make an oath, nothing changes it. That was how they did. And um, our, own, our own kindred, we are, uh, would I say mystics? I don't know. Uh, we are herbalists. Let me put it that way, the, 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 the right way. Because we know much about uh, occultism, herbs. So when uh, they want to seal the concession of ownership to us, our ancestors commanded the birds of the air. They went to collect dew, eerie, in a new pot, put it down, brought a fish from this river, it was, it, we came across the river outside there, brings pebbles from there, put inside that uh, water. Then, okay, from today, if anybody from anywhere wants to take a, this uh, kinship from you, this is what will happen. This is what will happen. Except on condition that they can go to these beds of those days, the same fish and the pebbles, then they can you know, struggle for it. But besides, they cost them what will happen to them. So they broke the pot, took away the fish to the river, the pebbles, then the boats were, you know, released to go away. That is how we become the head of this community till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Till tomorrow. It is indisputable, it's uncontestable. And uh, the school of Onimere is of the first class because we had uh, my ancestors had 16,000 villages under him. He used the way when the uh, default vendor state at the Kukuruku division of old. Kukuruku division of old. But uh, when we saw that, uh, when vendor was created, uh, we were still amongst the first class of us in default vendor state. But there, uh, we, I would say that uh, people are against us. That is the Bendelites. Why? Because we are the only European speaking people mm. in Bender State then, which is today Edo State. So, 
we, uh, we had to the petition the government, the Babangida regime as at that time, who in his own capacity made up to succeed, or rather to ex excise, sorry, to excise from the default vendor state to Ondo state. And uh, it was a sort of a swap. They swapped us to Ondo state and uh, uh, Sobe to Edo state. Because they speak Edo, we don't. We speak Yoruba here. So that's how we are here today in Ondo state. What a full history of uh, Emiri Kingdom. So why is this place called Kingdom? Uh, when you look at it very critically, uh, the question is genuine. Why? Because you have to have uh, a number of communities under one, you know, uh, kingship before you say a kingdom. Yes. You know, I told you earlier on, we were ruling 16,000 villages then, unlike today, when we have uh, Imeri. So we're standing alone now in the okay. yeah? But all the same, the kingdom still remains. Okay. Is there any sites here that, uh, uh, that, 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 that are very paramount with the history of uh, the kingdom itself? When we live here, like I told you earlier, on, we first of all settled at Okeomolu, but when we discovered that it's, it's, uh, it's a sort of a battlefield, we had to go up. Up that way, we call it Okemiri today. Why? Because it is up here. That was where we decided to come down here, Atega, then Okemiri. So, there, uh, it's a pity the dilapidated walls must have, you know, gone down to extreme now. But we still have things there, which one we can see. Like, for example, during the Tatraba Wars, we dug a moat to protect the community, whereby if any aggressive uh, people are coming to our community, when they get to the moat, where well, they've gotten to the crossroad, they can't move. They just remain there or go back. Or if they want to go, come by force, it means they will fall into the moat and then that will be their end. Mm. Okay, sir. Um, before coming down to Emery Kingdom, sir, I did a little research and um, uh, I found uh, what they call the bottomless lake, which is also known as Ebomi Lake. Can you tell us a brief history about uh, Ebomi Lake out and how it's being linked to Emiri Kingdom, sir? Uh, Ebomi Lake is between us and Ikbesi in Akoko Southeast. And uh, it is a natural lake where the depth one wouldn't know. I don't know, except if uh, by today's uh, scientific, uh, you know, findings, they may be able to know the depth. I don't know, but it is there. And when we finish from here, my people will take you to Abame Lake, you see for yourself and, uh, you know. Well, um, anyway, it's like uh, the, the king himself has already told us uh, all we need to know about uh, in Mary Kingdom. Imeri Kingdom is in Ondo State, Nigeria, West Africa. So, um, uh, Your Majesty, sir, um, is there any uh, word that you want to pass across to all the, uh, will I say, Imerians, let me put it that way, mm -hmm. uh, both home and abroad, sir? I first of all have to be grateful to God. Because um, this is my, by January 10th, 2021, I'll be 42 on the throne, right? Wow. And uh, for their cooperation, I thank everybody, having given my appreciation to the Almighty God, who has spared our lives till today. Uh, we wouldn't say there are no ups and downs, but all the same, God is taking absolute control. And my advice now is that, uh, or my plight, is every one of us, both old and young, at home and in the diaspora, should continue to join forces together to uplift this community, to upgrade it. Whatever anyone has 
to uh, contribute to the development of the community shall immensely be inappreciated. Because it is we who will develop the community, not any other people. Ayugula will not come. Idogo will not come because they have their own problems. So for this, there is need for us to be united and love each other, be a brother's keeper. And uh, nothing kills anybody nowadays because in those days people will say, well, I won't come because of witchcraft, this, that. No. If you don't kill yourself, nobody will kill you. Have that in mind. We have the Almighty God who is taking control of every uh, movement. So I pray those of us who are outside in the diaspora, the Lord will continue to take care of them, protect them, and uh, whatever business they are doing, they will prosper and bring down home the dividends of whatever they are able to do. Thank you very much. Gabi, there's something I want to ask, sir. Okay. Please permit me, sir. Right. Um, uh, I did a little research about you, sir, and I learned that um, you are very religious, sir. So, and uh, when I had your name, Apostle, and uh, so I, I was confused because uh, our people, you know, uh, somehow some of them, are many, they look at being a king and being an Apostle, you know, as something that's you know, it's not supposed to be. I don't know why. Maybe if you can just uh, clarify that for us. Sir. Thank you very much. Uh, before I was uh, enthroned, I happened to be a pastor under the Christ Gospel Apostolic Church of Nigeria in Lagos. Right? When I was, you know, brought home, they said necessarily I have to ascend the throne. And uh, it is nothing I can you know, close my eyes to, because they've gone up and down here and there to ensure that well, who is going to be there? Though we know it's directly from father to the first son. Yes. Uh, besides, after my enthronement, initially I belonged to the Anglican Communion, but you know, when the moment you go out, you can join any religion, freedom of religion. That was how I got into the Christ Gospel Apostolic Church as a priest there. After my enthronement, uh, my senior wife happens to be a founder of New Odaiwa Mimo Unima Jemu C and S worldwide. And she has a branch here in Emery. So whatever belongs to the wife belongs to the husband. Any leru leru. Leru. So invariably, I have to join her to be taking care of the you know, fold. I've been seen apostle under the C and S today. And uh, when we say, how do we marry religion with uh, custom or culture? It is simple. What you only do is, there are people, necessarily, they will sacrifice, they will do this, do that, yes. But what you need to do as a KBAC, because uh, this question came up somewhere. I told them, look, if you are prepared to be a KBAC, you must align yourself with the culture of that community, or else you are not a KBAC, right? You don't, it not, doesn't necessarily mean that you go to make rituals, no. But what they want to do, they will take your consent. You give them to go ahead. If there is any contribution they need from you, you, have just, you have to do it. It's just as simple as that. Wow. It's not difficult. I take the pulpit every fortnight, or every other Sunday. For instance, this last Sunday I was supposed to hold the, the pulpit, but I was saying I was there in my festival. I've just finished my New Year festival on the seventeenth of this month. Wow. So that is the position. It's not difficult at all, at all. <laughs> it's like I have another question, sir. Please. Please, please, <laughs> and uh, please. from the little that I've had, it's like uh, this place, this community, you know, uh, many people here are into farming. And um, I learned that uh, your majesty too, you also do farm as well. Do you do that? He who does not work, neither shall he eat. Okay? So, we have to work. We have to work. Have a farm, yes. 
So it's a sort of, you know, exercise. Not necessarily you carry cutlass, carry hood, this, that, you know, to do the job. But when you are there, you have to supervise. It's just as simple as that. Okay. You have to walk before you eat. Oh, wow. No food for lazy man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, it's on this note that uh, I will have to wrap today's uh, interview with the only Mary of the Mary Kingdom. So, till we come your way uh, with another wonderful and interesting video. Uh, on this note, I say bye bye and uh, oh, Dabo. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much.